Hello, I'm Mayor Phil Good with your weekly update. Last week was a busy and productive week in Prescott. On Monday, Richard Kreider was announced as the new Prescott Regional Airport Director. Rick comes to Prescott from San Antonio, Texas, where he served as Executive Vice President for Airport, Railport, and Military Relations at Port San Antonio. Rick brings a wealth of experience and connections with the airport industry across the nation, which will serve our Prescott Regional Airport very well. Rick will start his employment on May 28th. On Tuesday, during the Council voting meeting, we voted to approve the selection of Dallin Kimball as the new city manager. Dallin comes to Prescott with 14 years of public sector experience in Arizona, Virginia, and California including eight years as County Administrative Officer in Mariposa County, California, which is the home of Yosemite National Park. Dallin brings solid public sector leadership experience, and I look forward to working with him as we move forward with many important initiatives for our city. Dallin will begin employment on May 20th, 2024. We currently have an ongoing micro-seal pavement preservation project on Willow Creek Road from Iron Springs intersection by Wire MC to Green Lane that began on March 18th. This road project is expected to be completed at the end of April. If possible, please avoid Willow Creek Road using alternate routes. If you must drive along Willow Creek Road, I recommend that you plan extra time to reach your destination. After completion of the microseal project in late April, the City of Prescott will begin repairing damaged pavement along the northern section of Willow Creek Road between Commerce Drive and Pioneer Parkway. This project will consist of removing and replacing the asphalt pavement along the southbound curbside lane of Willow Creek Road. Once these projects are complete, the improvements will extend pavement life and improve the road quality for Prescott motorists. A public flood risk open house will be held today, April 1st, 2024, from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Rolly B. Simmons Community Center on Rosser Street to allow the public to review and discuss updated preliminary flood maps in person. Property owners will be able to look up their address to see how their flood risk may have changed. Specialists will be available to answer questions, but there is no formal presentation. These updated flood maps provide detailed, property-specific flood risk data. This data helps residents and business owners better understand their risk of flooding and guide building and flood insurance decisions. If you're not able to attend, more information about the mapping project and a link to view the updated maps can be found on our website, which is linked below. Property owners are encouraged to look up their property to see if it's in the remapped area, and if so, how it is affected. Changes in flood risk can mean changes in building and flood insurance requirements. Next week, on April 9th, the city will hold a study session to review the master plan for the Prescott Rodeo Grounds and receive information on the rezoning process and proposal. Documents related to the Prescott Rodeo Grounds rezoning and master plan are posted on the city's website. Citizens can go to our city website and scroll down to the Rodeo Grounds master plan. The City of Prescott is offering a free brush and vegetation debris drop-off event the entire month of April for its residential trash customers. This event runs every Saturday in April from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m at the City of Prescott Transfer Station, located at 2800 Sundog Ranch Road. Proof of City of Prescott residency is required. Please do not bag the brush or vegetation debris and do not include other trash. Remember to cover and contain all loads while transporting. This time of year, the Prescott area enters wildland fire season as the winter moisture subsides and the weather turns drier and warmer. The fire season for Prescott and all of northern Arizona generally falls between April 1st and July 1st. Weather and other factors can extend or shorten the fire season. Our fire department, working with its partner agencies, is doing more than ever to help our community be prepared and resilient. 
However, as a community within a wildland urban interface, we can always do more to minimize the risks. For those folks new to the area and possibly unfamiliar, being firewise relates to creating a defensible space around your home to decrease an approaching wildfire's intensity and to help give some working room for firefighters. It includes thinning out the brush and trees around your homes, removing their lowest branches, and eliminating problem materials like leaf litter, wood piles, propane tanks, and lumber from against your home. Every little bit we do to remove hazardous materials is a step in the right direction. To learn more about best practices in creating that defensible space, there is literature available online and at the links below. Tomorrow, April 2nd, we will hold a special study session for a presentation and discussion regarding public safety needs and funding options for them. That meeting will take place at 1 p.m. in the Council Chambers. We've been asking our public safety departments to do more with less for far too long. When we look at the statistics of our growth in our population, the expansion of our borders and the ability for us to be able to respond in a prompt manner so that every one of our citizens can be assured that they have equal access to public safety, we are simply not meeting that need equally. It's important we recognize that we want to have a smaller government with minimal but essential regulations and low taxes. But that doesn't mean no taxes. Proposition 443 showed that we could raise substantial revenue to fill the huge gap in our PSPRS pensions, yet we were able to retire that tax 50% faster than we even anticipated. Even so, we were the lowest tax community in the Quad Cities. That pension tax demonstrated that we do have revenue options that we can utilize to deal with this essential and growing challenge. The meeting tomorrow is our first step in considering solutions and options. Other meetings this week include a Council Subcommittee on Water Issues meeting on Tuesday that will take place at 9.30 a.m. in the Council Chambers. On Wednesday, we have two meetings. The Mayor's Veterans Commission will be at the Grace Sparks Activity Center at 9 a.m. and the Workforce Housing Committee will meet on Wednesday at 10 a.m. in Council Chambers. I'm Mayor Phil Good, and I'll update you again next week. Thanks for watching.